and welcome back to Sun Up on 7. We are back for a dynamic discussion with the lovely Miss Beverly Williams, the niece of Philip Golson, one of our national heroes here in Belize, and also Mr. Lawrence Vernon, author of the new book, The Time to Save Your Country. Welcome to Sun Up on 7. How are you both doing this morning? Thank you. I'm doing good. You're doing good? Yes. Enjoying the cooler weather? Yes. Love it. This is my, Love it? Love my, it. My type of weather, too. Your type of weather? Yes. Okay. You get to wear the long sleeves <laughs> and you don't feel bad about it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is an exciting book to think yes. about. I can imagine you being the niece knowing that there's this book dedicated, you know, to your uncle and to see his legacy continue to live on because everybody, well, to me, I would just say, People respect, appreciate, and love Philip Goldson. Yes. And to now see that we have a book here that really is going to be embodying, you know, him as a leader, you know, his principles, his legacy. Talk a little bit to me, um, Mr. Vernon, about, you know, the idea of creating this book. And then also the name, the dynamic name of the time to save your country. Because remember, there's the next line that you told us about that before you lose it, one of his signature lines. Yes. So tell me a little bit about, you know, what was the inspiration to create this book and then the choice of this title? Yeah, great question, Renato. Well, the, um, <clears throat> the idea was um, partly mine and partly from Niche, National Institute of um, Culture and History. They actually commissioned me to write the book. Ah. And um, I took it up gladly because there was a previous book written by Prof. Ba about the other national hero, George Bryce by Godfrey Smith. And so I say, our other national heroes should be equally recognized. Very true. So um, I, I took up the, the, um, the research and the writing very gladly. And I went about doing it through mostly um, um, contacting the, um, rather researching the, the newspapers, the billboard and the clarion in those days. They were very explicit in their descriptions of what went on during the nationalist period. And um, the People's United Party at that time was advocating for nationalism against colonialism. And um, in those early days, Philip Goldson was a member of the People's United Party, along with George Price and John Smith and Nicholas Pollard and people like that. And so um, during that period then, it was a very um, turbulent period and so I, my, my research took me into the, um, the newspapers, as which I said was very explicit and descriptive. And um, I also did um, some interviews with people who, who um, knew him, his, um, his sister, Maud Williams, and... Um, his name? My mom. Yes. <laughs> okay, Miss Maud Williams is Miss Beverly's mother, okay. Yes, uh-huh. And... Um, the, the, the book was actually commissioned from 2016. Oh, wow. And um, the, the, the research took me about, research and writing took me about two or three years. And then um, <clears throat> Nietzsche could not really go, um, afford to, to publish the book because uh, at that time the, the, the COVID um, had, had come in and their budget was cut. So for those two years it lay, it lay in, a, in abeyance until 2021, 22 when they decided to print and publish it. Wow. So that, that's, that, that's the product here we, we have now. Wow. And the, the, the book was launched last week, Thursday, last week, Thursday, last at, Thursday. at the, at the um, House of Culture. And, and then for the title too as well, like very specific, why choose this title? In the entire research are you doing, like felt like this was the best title that we could have been, we could have given this book. Yes, well, um, I, I, I have to confess that um, this was not my original title. Oh. My, my title was simply the Philip Wilson story. But then when they had another look at it, they say, why not give it something more um, exotic? The, the, the time to save your country. And that's the, the first part of the, his signature statement. Yeah. The other part is before, before, you, lose before you lose it. Mm. And that, that's actually um, um, emblazoned on, on his tombstone too. So, Miss Bev, let's get you in, because you are a family. So, you, this is supposed to be like... Yes, Renata. 
<laughs> How was it, you know? Because I'm sure you're one of the people that were interviewed. Ah. Uh, no? No. You don't ever want any people with interview? When? You mean at the launch? No, I mean no, if no, 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 to not. gather some <coughs> research. So. Well, let me tell you, um, Mr. Lara may not be saying it, Sir Lara, as we know him affectionately, is always a fixture in my family home. Every Saturday we used to see him and there were lots of conversation. But he had that conversation mostly with my mom. Oh, my mom is the only um, living sibling at 94 years old of um, the Golson um, clan. I mean, his children are, are there in the U.S., my cousins and, and Florence, who lives in Belize. And then my family, we're the, the closest um, relatives to Uncle Philip, right? But um, no, um, Mr. Lar, I, I, some of the things I do remember him, we did interact with him as a family part. I could remember clearly him being a very, very, very disciplined person. Oh. Um, and there's lots that we learned as, as um, family members from Uncle Phil. He, um, my mom will tell you that um, growing up in the 1940s, 30s, 40s, when my, my mom was going to high school, my grandfather said, no, 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 you're a woman. You stay home and help mom and you do that. I can't afford to send you to high school. Uncle Phil said, not at all. And he made sure that the two girls, because there were five boys and two girls, that the two girls went to high school. So he is the hero for my mom. And at age 94 now, she still remembers some of the things that we've been through and the memories. And I, as, as children growing up, we do have our own memories of him. Um, heartwarming to see the picture. First time I saw that of him inside the billboard press and moving around and typing on the old yeah. machine. That's the first time I'm seeing that. But that's, oh, wow. that's heartwarming and, and good memories of him. I know you said that he was very disciplined, you know. And too disciplined. Too <laughs> disciplined. Uh -oh. You need to give me one of these four, man. Give yes, me one of these well, there, there are two <laughs> things I can say quickly, right? <laughs> one was um, from my mom saying that um, he went, um, the book will tell you that, to, to work at a very young age. And so he was almost the breadwinner for the family. Wow. And he made sure, she said, he used to come every Saturday night and bring a five cents and send them to buy chocolates or send them to buy some snack for the rest of the, the siblings. And they came back. Got over change. We had, they gave us excess, we gave us excess. And he was sitting there looking at them and they opened their chocolates and whatnot. He said, take back the change. Take it back. Oh, wow. So from a very young age, he has been like that. My own experience was growing up in the public service. That has been my life. And I remember the first time at a very young age being transferred to Dangriga. Mm. I was in tax administration at the time and they said, you're going to man the Dangriga office. And I got so frightened, I began crying. I said, I'm not going out there alone and I don't know anybody there and I'm crying. And he happened to come by the house on that Saturday and we were talking about it. And he said, but you signed up for the public service, so go do your job. Wow. Right? Wow. So he, he was very, very, very and just like right and, and always there to give the best advice. And it was the best thing he could have done for me in my career going forward. So I would always have fun, fun memories. There's lots more, but those were the two things that stuck out for us as family. Very, and, and on the political side, he always said, um, your opponent, your, 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 the person you're working with or running against is not your enemy. It's just your opponent. So it's not a war you're in, but it is for you to show what it is that you can achieve as a politician. And of course, his book will tell you that his job was well done here on earth. Definitely. Right? So. I'm just thinking about those nuggets that you gave us of Sending back the change. First of all, the whole five cents for, um, for chocolate just that blew me. I'm like, five cents can't buy no more chocolate. Came back yeah. a bonbon bon right now. Yeah, 1940s. <laughs> yeah, 1940s. I'm like, my goodness, I get change <laughs> from the five cents. Back. My goodness. That in itself, though, I, and I'm hoping that viewers can really capture that moment and understand mm -hmm. the value and integrity mm -hmm. that he had in, you know, being honest. Yes. Because a lot of people, I'll be very honest, a lot of people will say, oh, well, that is a study. They have blessing from God or it's not necessarily extra change or whatever it is. But to see that, you know, no, that is not for us. Take it back. 
that speaks volumes mm -hmm. of character. Mm -hmm. yes. And then also, you know, advising, like, this is what you signed up for. You know, the reality of being, this is your job. If you have to go here, you have to do this. Yes. You'll just have to do it. So that's the characteristics makes you just, in those little stories, tell you a lot about who this man was and how amazing was he a, was. To he was a disciplinarian life. without a belt. Oh, so no lashing, but <laughs> no lasher in a way with the, the truth, yes. the facts that you need in your life. Yes, and he, he was, um, as um, <clears throat> Beverly mentioned, she, um, she, she had contact with him. I did not have any contact with him, really. Just, just in passing, I didn't sit down to have a conversation with him while he was alive. But um, what I learned from um, Bev's mother um, sort of um, gave me the, the, uh, uh, a very brilliant insight in, into his character. And um, although he was small in stature, he was a giant in thought. Yes. Uh, yes, and... Um, Actually, um, the Beb, Beb mentioned that um, his, his political career, um, I think Beb was the, is the only one who took up the, the, the political... Um, <laughs> that it pushed <laughs> me here. <laughs> <laughs> you have to go find a coach. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> he, was, um, he was called, the, the, although the George Price was called the, the father of the nation, Philip Gosden was called the father of democracy. Because he stood all the time in opposition, and he actually was an indomitable um, person, yeah. always fighting and always um, having demonstrations and picketings. To to um, I, I must mention that uh, at the beginning, well, throughout his career, political career, he was always advocating for self-government and independence. See, he never swayed from that. Even when he left the People's United Party and formed the Honduran Independence Party and the NIP. He never swayed from that um, thought. That was something that's very passionate about for him. Yes, and he actually was um, a member. He formed um, a member of the, at least four political parties. Apart from the PUP, there was the National Independence Party, the Honduran Independence Party, the United Democratic Party, and the last party he formed the neighbor, neighbor mm -hmm. National Alliance for um, for beliefs and rights. rights. Yes. Wow. That was over uh, the maritime areas, Bill. His differences about that. So he had broken away to form neighbor fighting for the rights for territorial integrity for Belize. But why do you think, you know, because having your hands in so many different parties, like being really could know exactly why he's like the father of democracy mm -hmm. in that light. Why do you think, and I guess I could ask you, Ms. Bev, because of being his niece, you know, getting a good insight, and of course your mom, all the stories that she has told you. Why do you think that he saw it such as a need to have democracy, have self-independence from, you know, everything that, forming these four different parties, what do you think was that driving force of why he thinks it's important to have parties? Well, I think um, Uncle Philip was about the people and service. Remember that started through the union movement. Mm -hmm. and advocating for rights for the workers and for a better standard of living. So it has always been about that. All the other issues that came along about adult suffrage, um, um, all, the, all the, the rights fighting for, for the territorial integrity of Belize, he had always advocated that we should not um, concede anything to Guatemala. And so he thought those were his main, main um, advocacies that he fought for during his time. Um, he stood for service for country. There's many other things. That the book is a good read. I, I began, Mr. Lauren, I have to tell you, when I'm finishing the chapter, I'm looking forward to see how thick is the other one because I have something to do. So can I finish another chapter before I put it down, right? So it, it tells you some of the, the deep areas that he went into, the things that he advocated for. So I would want to ask People to get the book, Mr. Salar, read, and, and you will see the history of all his contributions to the country of Belize. We as a family, we are very, 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 very proud that he was made national hero. Mm -hmm. yeah. My mom, well deserved. Yes, my mom well. is now 94, and as I said, the only living sibling, and so that is her hero. Oh, and I mean, from right. the story I told, only right for me, so. Um, I want to ask, you know, how can people get 
The book has just come out from last week. Where can they get it for people that are in the diaspora that want to get the book? Like, tell us all the details yeah. and the costs. Yeah, and is it available online? Is it available on Amazon? And where is it located mm -hmm. where people can purchase it here in Belize? Um, presently, it's, uh, it's in, in Belize City. It's available at the Museum of Belize. That's the the okay. old the old prison. And um, <clears throat> when it was launched, it was um, sold for twenty five dollars, and now it's sold for thirty dollars. Okay. And it, it will be available in one or two um, of the other bookstores in Belize City. Maybe by next week. Nice. Um, it it can be. I, I asked the the people at Niche whether it could be um, on Amazon, and they said it could be eventually put on Amazon. Okay. So we'll have to look out for that. You gotta give us the heads up when it's on Amazon, because I'm sure people, you know, in the diaspora would love exactly. to yes. get a copy of that if they can't get a physical copy. Do yes, you know? I, I got a call from um, one or two people in, in the States asking um, they, if they send me some money if I can post it. Yes, that's the thing. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm guessing you're going to get a lot of calls until yes. that goes on Amazon. Mm, yeah. You know, he was afflicted with that glaucoma and then eventually became blind. He learned Braille. He studied law while he was um, already going blind. And he continued um, with his service. And so he was, he advocated for, for um, well, we don't say disabled, we say the... the um, persons with diverse abilities. Diverse. So he did a lot of work in that area also. So he he has been an advocate in many, many areas. In and there's a lot to unpack in this book, because I can right. imagine three years of research, you know, really going into the archives, getting all these newspapers, hearing yes. all the stories to come back. Come back. How much pages this book has? Because I feel like, you know, it would make you put everything together. You can look at it, it's not that thick, but it has it been a lot. I really do love the cover as well, though. Yes, it's, the cover is, is very See, that telling. picture came from his daughter, Florence, so... So we have 218 pages, which I think is a good amount for oh, a yes. book. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. The time to save your country. Yes, and definitely. Then. Before was, you lose it. Before yeah, before you lose, lose it. it. I was just thinking this would be a great book. Um, I would have loved something like this to read in school. I just so this out. should definitely be something that should be picked up in literature classes, in schools, in high schools for students to read. Because it's important for us to learn about our national heroes. I remember in w Wesley College reading Bridge to Terabithia and all these different stories that were wonderful and helped me with storytelling and writing. However, I still like to learn it's about like national our story. national heroes. And I le loved learning about Mayan, ancient Mayan um, culture and communities and our Belizean culture and things like that. So this is like, should be a staple. I, I'm advocating for that in the schools so that the children can learn about our national heroes. Teachers mm -hmm. now have a book to say, if you're not going to do a paper pan, Philip Goulson. The time to oh, say no, our can I say, no, I got perfect research exactly. content right now. Welcome, <laughs> Mr. Lar. And I think that um, yes. at, at the launch, the, um, the minister did say that yes. it will mm -hmm. be put in the schools. Oof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, praise God. So, so that, that, is yeah, great. that is great. It was Niche and the Ministry of Education, right, mm -hmm. Mr. Lara? Yes, uh -huh. we should have our young people researching, doing speeches, yes. doing, you know, papers on our national yeah. heroes, on Philip Golson, because he has so much to give them, so much to impact them with. Mm -hmm. yes. I'm sure a lot of them don't know the history properly. So thank you so much, yes, Mr. Lawrence, for being, you know, that trailblazer to three years dedicated strong <laughs> to, like, get all those stories. Because it's not easy to write a no. book, you know, no, 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 somebody's it life. It's no. definitely not easy. And just reading from the comments here, Renata, people are saying they're glad there's a book about Mr. Golson and that the kids know yes. they need to know the history. And someone's saying not only literature class in high school for it to be a stable, but also history class. Yes, Good. as well. So I think SJC yeah. could adopt it for their history program. That would be University something. of Belize. Exactly. University of Belize. University of Belize. All of them, they do history. So this should be something that's in there where they have to dissect it and go into it. Yeah. A, we, so, yes, go ahead. <laughs> you know, um, I was about to say that, um, as you mentioned, history. Um, one of the things that he advocated for from 1967 when he gave the talk, a talk at the United Nations, he was the first person in government to actually give a talk at the UN, right, in 1967. People thought it was George Price, but George Price didn't speak until 1975 at the UN. Oh, wow. Um, Philip at that time advocated that Belize should go to the ICJ from then, and yes. this is what is going on yes. now, right? This is, yeah. From, from what, 1967? 1967. 
Wow. <laughs> my mom told me that when the ICG thing came up, he said, Phil told me that we this thing will end up at the ICG. Wow. wow. So, yeah. yeah, that foresight. Visionary. He said yeah. that foresight, foresight he saw. Yeah. That, wow. That's incredible. And is that in the book? Is that yes. Yes, okay, so no <laughs> said, Remember, he went to jail for things that he advocated for, so... Yeah, so that's why I'm loving the fact that this can put together in a nice, compact, a beautiful book where yes. you can see mm -hmm. and know, because I'm sure a lot... I did not know that. Yeah. So yeah. people can learn so much yes. from our history, the rich contribution of what he has done, what yeah. he has said, what mm -hmm. he, you know, has put his hand mm -hmm. in to make believe what it is today, mm -hmm. the democracy. Democratic process. So, yes. well, really want to thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Bev, for sharing those stories yes. and coming. <laughs> I know your mommy must be so proud right now yeah, to have you know our presentation. <laughs> um, as we're wrapping up, is there any final words that you want to give to, especially our younger viewers? Because I think this is an exciting time for them to be able to know about our national heroes, which is like crucial. You know, when you go across anywhere, you have to represent our country and talk about not just the flora and fauna, but the people that have made it what it is today. Is there anything you want to like tell our younger people when it comes to this book and learning about Philip Golson? Well, from, from the family perspective, um, like I said, Uncle Phil was, was you will see that the discipline that, that he um, employed in his life is right there in that book. Yeah. There's so much you could learn from him, so much that we have learned as a family. And that is what make us, makes us so proud yeah. of who um, he was, right? Um, being called a national hero, and thanks to Mr. Larno for putting it on paper so that my children and my children's children would be able to read and understand who he was and for, for them to not only think of those um, reality shows or, or, or the, the, the movie stars and try to emulate those, but to emulate mm -hmm. somebody like Philip Goulson, That's who true. will teach you a lot and, and, and bring a disciplined life for you um, make our society better. Definitely. Right? That's what he advocated for, for the rights of the workers and living, um, better living conditions. That's how it started, and then it went right into what it is for your country on a whole. So, so appropriate, the time to save your country before is before you, you lose before it. Before you lose it. And we definitely don't want to lose a copy of this book, guys. Make sure you check it out. <laughs> so we're going to work on having that available on Amazon for people in the diaspora. Because I know people are going to say, we don't need to push it. They got it available yes. on Amazon. So for those that you know, can't purchase it in Belize um, City, you can get it you know, at the museum, the old prison. And it's going to be available in other stores as well soon coming. Yes. Um, definitely check out with Niche. You can ask and see where you can get your purchase copies for $30. Very affordable to get, be able to get that kind of history yes. in yeah. one book, guys. Yes. Perfect investment into yourself and into your actual nation too as well. So don't miss out. And thank you so much, Mr. Lawrence, for it's the much, incredible, yes. incredible work you're doing. It's much, you know, it's this was my well joy. Needed. Yes. Very much well needed. It was my pleasure to write the book. Yeah, so with that, guys, we go to our next commercial break. When we're back, we're going to be talking to travelers or we're going to be having lunch. We're going to be having travel. I can't have to double check because I'm like I'm belly happy right now. So we're going to be having travelers. Because we got a whole chef thing with CC's here yes. to give me some good food. So before that, we're going to be having travelers coming because they have a new, some, some up on the, the Blend Belizean Blue, a new signature. What's all of that? Stay tuned for that exciting conversation and demonstration we are going to be tasting on your behalf to let you know that it's well for you. Stay tuned. <laughs>